Today we're going to do a Q&A video and our topic is traveling with photography equipment. Now this is very appropriate because I just got back from New York City. I was up there doing some networking for the Artist Series and I'm really excited about how that went. I went to a show called APAD which happens every year. It stands for the Association of International Photography Art Dealers and it's an excellent place to network and look at prints. I did a vlog post on that and you guys can see that. It was the last video that I did. But when I was up there um, I got on Twitter and I asked you guys uh, for questions about traveling with photography photography gear, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Film or digital when traveling? This is a tough question because I am one of those people who still likes to shoot film. Having said that though, I really have been only shooting digital in the last six months when I travel. And there are two reasons why, and I'm not exactly crazy about the reasons, but they are actually why I have not been shooting as much film. The first one is, is that particularly when I'm traveling, you know, a big part of being a photographer in today's day and age is social media and being able to be in the moment, so to speak. And so being able to share your images while you're traveling, have a discussion about that um, with people on social media is probably the biggest reason why I'm just shooting digital. And I shoot a lot on my phone as well because it's the easiest way to do that. Now, aesthetically, I would rather be shooting film, but the problem with film is, is it's going to take me a couple days to get back, develop it, scan it, or print it, or whatever I'm gonna do, and then be able to share it. So really, I will still shoot film for more serious work, but all in all, when I travel lately, it's just been digital, and that's the main reason why. Some guy named Matt Day asks, if you could only bring one film camera on a trip around the world, name that camera lens film combo. I think I've heard of this Matt Day guy, I'm not sure. Um, actually, Matt is a good friend of mine, and he's a serious seriously awesome photographer and he has a really cool YouTube channel where he talks about photography. I will link him up in the show description. Um, to answer your question, Matt, um, I've gone on record before saying the Holga is my favorite camera of all time and the reason that it is is largely because of how it pushes me as a photographer. However, in your question, if I were going to travel around the world with own, only one uh, camera and film and lens combination, what would that be? I think for me it would be the Nikon F3. It's kind of like the first serious 35 millimeter that I ever got years and years ago. Uh, I like the fact that the camera is aperture priority, just the way it works naturally, and then you can switch into manual mode if you need to make an exception for something. Um, it's easy to use. Uh, I, the lens would be just the 50 millimeter 1.8. Um, they're cheap, both the camera and the lens. They're easy to replace if they break or you lose them. Um, as far as film, I think that if I could only limit myself to one, it would be black and white and it would also be Ilford Delta 400 and the reason I would say Ilford Delta 400 I've always liked that film and I know that a lot of people who are purists know that it's a modern t-grain film and it's not uh, maybe as versatile as something like Tri-X however Tri-X has a lot of different looks that you can do and it makes it a great film but you generally have to change the way you shoot and process the film when you're traveling typically you're gonna have film in the camera and you're gonna use it and let's say we don't have a second camera I could have a wide variety of shots of different different contrasts, uh, high contrast, low contrast. I just think that Ilford Delta behaves better in the long run and I've always liked the look of it. I like the way the grain looks and it's just a great film. And so that's what my film camera lens combo would be. Freya asks, did you ever have any problems concerning gear and airport security? I've never had any huge problems with the TSA or airport security, but having said that, I also kind of over prepare to deal with airport security because it, and this is beyond the scope to go into airport security in the US here, but the TSA, the Travel Security Administration, oversees that and they have a series of rules that you will have to comply to to get through there and I think the biggest things for me is make sure you get to the airport really early the second thing that I think is important is to be prepared for certain things first of all when you get through the security line and you've gotten past the person who's checked your ID and your passport or whatever and then you get over to the part where you put all your stuff down the x-ray um, the first thing I always do is grab one of the attendants there and just tell them that I have camera gear and I've pretty much every time found everybody to be pretty polite and accommodating. Um, when that has not been possible, a couple other things that can help is if you are a film photographer, I would, you know how the TSA makes you put all of your toiletries in a little see-through plastic bag so you can pull it out really easily and they can inspect. Um, I would do the same thing for lithium ion batteries and film. It just makes it easier. Um, lithium ion batteries are not supposed to be checked and a lot of times if it's a crowded flight, you do get to a situation at the gate where they want to check a bag. It would be nice to be able to pull those out really quick. I think another thing too is film. I never put 
put film through the x-ray. I know what the signs say when you go up there and it says it's pretty much safe for anything under the speed of 800 ISO. Um, I don't trust it. I don't know the machine and my photographs, honestly, when I do travel with film, are they're, they're vastly more important than the camera gear itself. If I lose the photos, then they're gone. I can't ever replace those. So for that reason, I always request a hand check and you are perfectly within your rights to do that. You have to ask an attendant, tell them you have film, have it ready. That's a big deal. Don't show up with just handfuls of film and stuff because what's going to happen is, especially if they're crowded, is an agent's going to have to pull you aside and they're going to have to go through and actually inspect everything. And the easier you can make that on the agent, the faster you're going to be able to get through and the less pain that you're going to cause anyone. Um, I've never had any problems with airport security. Some airports I have found to be a lot more strict about things than others. For instance, LaGuardia in New York City is one of them. For some reason, whenever I have my large bag, um, so with the multiple cameras for artist series and all that, pretty much every time they want to hand check that. That same bag at other airports, they just run it through the security thing, it's not a big deal. So it's just kind of funny. And at least one of those times, I know that the agent was a photographer himself and I think he really just wanted to check out and see what I had in the bag, which is fine, which is another reason you need to allow enough time to be there early and get through security. When you take your camera to the beach, how do you avoid sand in between the lenses or how do you clean it? You know, I don't shoot on the beach a whole lot, but having said that, I did a video last summer when I was in Santa Monica and it was the video, the first video that I did with John Free, the one that's in black and white, and I'll link that up if you haven't seen it. That entire video was shot with two point-and-shoot cameras. Now, I'm kind of careful about things, and I don't think I would, definitely would never take a mirrorless camera to the beach. I don't think I would even take a DSLR to the beach, just because if there's any possibility of getting sand in there, I just don't want to deal with it. So the one nice thing about using point and shoots is they're not nearly as expensive usually. And two, they're a little more closed off. They're not perfect, but I, you know, we were out on the beach all day in Santa Monica and I did that entire video on two point and shoot cameras and it worked out just fine. How do you back up your photos when traveling? That's actually an excellent question, and I will share with you what my ritual is, and you can easily expand on this if you want to get more anal retentive about things. But when I travel, I use one of those Lassie rugged drives, and at the end of the day, I will offload my images to that. But the second key to this is I make sure that I bring enough SD cards to where I don't have to clear them off. And so at the end of the trip, you've got a ton of SD cards um, that have images on them, but that's kind of a secondary copy to what's on the Lassie drive. So what you can do is one of two things. You can either use the mail or UPS or something and you can ship your SD cards back so they're not even on the flight with you. Um, that's one way you could do it. Or at least I would just make sure that the rugged drive and the SD cards are, you know, one's in your luggage and you've got one in your coat pocket or something like that. And then that just ensures that you've got a second copy of everything when you get home. I use these little Pelican cases and they're really nice because they've got two sides to them. And so I'll keep unused cards in one side and that way when I've used them, I put them in the other side and I know what's on them. Paul writes, do you have any recommendations for photo galleries or exhibits in New York City. I will be there the first week in May. Absolutely. New York is, like any major world city, uh, very unique and a very special city. And in terms of photography, there is a lot to do in New York. I'm not real sure what's going on in May, but let me tell you, there's basically four things that I like to do when I'm in New York City. The first thing you want to do is check out what museums are showing. And if you've never been to MoMA, you've never been to the Met, you've never been to the City Museum of New York, they all have have wonderful photography collections. So even if they don't have a photography exhibition per se, generally they have collection out and those works are exquisite. And if you haven't seen them, that's one thing to do. The second thing I like to do is check out galleries. Now the cool things about galleries is one, they're all free and two, they're usually clumped together. So for instance, if you go over to Chelsea, you can go over to the Gagosian Gallery and you can go see the Aperture Gallery. And my personal favorite is the Fuller Building, which is on South Central Park on the east side. I think it's 57th Street, and the Fuller Building has three of my favorite galleries in the world. Howard Greenberg is there, Naelia Alexander is there, and Tom Gitterman is there. And I know all three of those people. Um, I've asked them to help consult on the artist series, so I'm a little biased, but they really do have three wonderful galleries. They're all on three different floors, they're free, you go in, check out work, and they all offer something very different, which I like. Howard Greenberg is going to be more vintage photography, a lot of street photography, um, whereas Tom Gitterman is probably 
the most cutting edge of the three of those galleries. Um, he deals in some really challenging work, particularly when it's historic sometimes. Like, it's people who aren't huge names. And I really like Tom, and I really like his approach to what he does with his gallery. And of course, Naelia Alexander is wonderful. Um, she represents people like George Tice and Alexei Tedorenko, and you can go in and see their prints. Um, so that's the second thing I like to do. The third thing I like to do, and I did a video on this in February, where I did a little historical photography tour of New York City. And this is the one one of the things that's really fun to me about New York is there is such a wealth of the history of photography that exists there. And so particularly in the mid-century, mid-20th century, where you have Irving Penn and Richard Avedon tearing up the fashion world, and then you have the whole uh, generation of street photographers, W. Eugene Smith, um, Harold Feinstein, uh, Saul Leiter. And so to be able to just look up historical places and see where those locations are today is kind of fun, and I did a whole historical photography video, um, and I'll link up to that somewhere in here uh, in the show description. So that's the second, third thing. The last thing that is really, I think, the most fun about New York is there is a feeling that is there of all of that history that's come before you and you're kind of standing on the top of that mountain and just for me just make sure you have some time to walk around and shoot images and make pictures because it's a very inspiring place to be from that side of things. Thank you to the folks that sent questions and this has been a lot of fun and I kind of like this format of a themed Q&A and so we may do more of this so if you're interested in knowing when we're going to have opportunities to ask questions remember to follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Ted Forbes and I'll put links in the show description and all that. Uh, it's an interesting format and I kind of like to maybe do this once every two weeks or something like that if you guys are into it. Um, I got a lot of stuff coming coming up uh, that I'm really excited about. Artist Series starts on Monday, and I am crazy busy, but really excited about that. And I've got a couple more videos that I want to get out before then. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the stuff that I'm putting out. And it is a lot these days. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.